Not the baby, no, please. No, 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 no. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with a new season of House of the Dragon. Yes, Team Black Baby all the way. Just getting that out the way right, right away. Right away, if you're new to my channel, we're team black in this house. So just know, <laughs> that's who I'm gonna be rooting for. But I'm very, very excited to get into the new season. The first season came out swinging, I loved it. It was just all the things that I like to see in a good drama fantasy show. And I'm hoping we can continue that energy going into this season. We ended the last season pretty tragically. We see our girl, Renera lost one of her kids at the hands of one of her twisted ass brothers. And yeah, it's it's all like Donkey Kong, unfortunately. And I think she's known it was gonna go this way, even though she was really hoping that it wouldn't. So I expect this season to be really crazy. Like last season was all about the political damage. This season, I think we're actually gonna get into the physical damage. We're gonna have casualties. Hopefully not too many people that I like, but we're just gonna have to watch and find out. So seeing the title of the first episode, A Son for a Son, I gotta say I agree. I gotta agree, because that death was not necessary last season and I don't like that one eyed kid. So I'm not gonna take too much more here. We're gonna jump into this episode. Just before I do though, if you'd like to be notified of when I do uploads of this show or anything else you might be watching of mine, please do join the fam, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can be in the know. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the first episode right now. Does that raven have a message? All men of honor must pay its price. The North owes a great duty to the seven. I was about to say this sounds like a northern accent. One older than any us. Sounds the way that Jon Snow used to speak. Night's Watch cultivated its strength from doomed men. Who had their life as their only possession? Is it gonna be a black rock? But my yeah. ancestor, got screwed? Torrin Stark, oh. began a tradition by making North must stand ready. Why? Winter is coming. Exactly. Oh. The Conqueror and the King in the North. You at least had the mercy not to threaten me with your dragon. Shade. If men do not remember the oath sworn to King Viserys. And to his rightful heir. Starks do not forget their oaths, my prince. <laughs> That's the truth. No. The High Tower's plan to usurp the throne. If my mother is to defend her claim to hold the realm united, she needs an army. War is coming. The size of that sword, my God. Yeah, take a good look at what my, my man's talking about here. This is no joke. <laughs> this is no joke. His grace stood at this very outlook and watched as their dragons, the greatest power in the world, refused to cross it. Mm-hmm. Understand. Do you think my ancestors built a 700-foot wall of ice to keep out snow and sabbath? Right? Can we just use our brains a little bit? What does it keep out? <laughs> Death. Quite literally, that gets up and walks and kills. I have thousands of gray beards who have already seen too many winters. They are well honed. So they're old. Older? Someone can gray it like 20, you don't know. A raven's arrived. Urgent news from Dragonstone. Mommy? It's about his brother. I really love that line. You really think we built a 700 foot wall just to guard against wildlings? <laughs> For real? <laughs> Take your mount again. We're flying out. I just got off. We're going to King's Landing. To what end? Killing Vagar. I cannot face that hoary old bitch alone. Ooh! Was this the Queen's command? The Queen remains absent. He I said this is for me. It was a raven that bore me news of Lena's death. I existed for weeks in torment. Mm, remember her? It was only when I saw my daughter's mortal remains that I could begin to mourn her. We all grieve differently. What if Eamon would happen upon her? Then I would pity Eamon. Period. You don't want to go against the mama who's just lost her kid. If you'd have acted when you had the chance, Ooh. Egon's line would be extinguished. Mm, he ain't wrong, though. And Luke would be alive. But we'd also be at war. Constant civil war. Yeah, she's like, I can't argue I that point. You're right. 
I was, I was with him. On. What did you with a king? Who? She's like, you can't tell me what to do, boy. I'm older than you, I think. I don't know the ages, actually. She seems older, though. I, too, really wish that she had just taken out everybody in that throne room, though. I, I still feel like that was a hugely missed opportunity. But I get it. Politically, it would have been a mess. I was very sorry to hear about your heir's death. It was the blackest of treacheries. It was. They tell me that you're the one that dragged my body out of the sea. Oh. I am indebted to you, Alan. That is big of him to say, if he means it. Hmm. Interesting. All right, Alan. Got my eye on you. Does it feel like you want to be indebted to the Targaryens or working for the Targaryens? Thank you for saving Corlys, though, because I like him. Hopefully you guys can be friends. Oh, God. I'm going to give forewarning for anyone who's not seen my reactions before. I'm really not a fan of most people on house green, so buckle up. I'm, I'm not going to be the nicest. <laughs> He'll be king one day. He must begin his instruction. What if he does not want to be king? Ooh. You must not interrupt his custom. He's going to do just that. All you need to do is when he's sleeping, stab him with the needle. They'd be fools to come with Vega protecting the city. Not the dragons. The rats. The way I always take her literally, just go. I'm convinced she's seeing some stuff y'all ain't seeing yet. And by the time you figure it out, it's going to be too late. This is something I could have lived without seeing. This man is just a hoe for anybody royal, There's huh? Chin in the air. I really want him to die painfully. So, so painfully. We cannot. Again. Sure, sure. You say that. Yeah, sure, Christ. After. Mm hmm. Don't care. Please end this. Is that a rat catcher? Because if it was. My letters to Rhaenyra, has there been any answer? An apology for her dead son? Right? None, Your Grace. In hopes that new terms might not might be negotiated. Release it at once. Stop. Why are you fighting with the child? Let him have the damn ball. Right? Let him have the damn ball. Wouldn't that be fun, Jaharis? Should the master of coin be your royal steed? <laughs> <laughs> Useless children, just like their mother and their father, really. We do have need for a new master of ships. We could offer the title to the young Lord. Nice little bitch. If we loose the dragons to war, there'll be no calling them back. We must proceed cautiously. No. Fat old Lord Tully will either raise my banner or see his burn. We should fly to River Run. <laughs> They're your little bastards. And Vagar is needed here to deter Rhaenyra from attacking in retribution for the death of her son. Again. Errors. But he don't give a damn. Cannot wait till he dies. Good morning, your grace. Oh, this morning, weirdo Lance. again. Still looking for feet? But your handmaiden said that you were indisposed. Yeah, want to elaborate? You might have to start giving up that kitty to more people. I've chosen your new staff personally. Hmm, people are under his thumb. Oh, I love the fact that she's digging herself into a hole she'll never get out of. I hope it's painful. Just leave, just leave, just leave me. To have like eight people around me taking a bath every day. Mm -mm. Although they didn't bathe daily back in these days, but you know, still, it's enough. It's too much. Well, keep scrubbing, girl. It's never gonna come off that blood all over your hands. Oh, she's trying to find the body. She said, don't you be pillaging the remains of my son or his dragon. Okay, that dismount though. Don't play with her. And I know she feels probably somewhat guilty because she sent him out on that mission. Like she didn't do anything wrong with it, but if she hadn't. Oh, Cyrax is like, I got you. Who do you want me to burn, baby? Who do you want me to burn? King Aegon. Aegon the Magnanimous. Second of his name. You can't even spell Magnanimous. The Magnanimous. Exactly. He's like, I have no idea what that word even means. Why would you do that? Keep it to slow, small words. Two syllables at max. Tis my flock. 
a, a, a tenth of them taken by... Dragons? We already made a promise to all the crown lands that a tithing of livestock would be necessary to sustain the dragons. I was about to say, you need to feed them dragons. Perhaps we could just return his sheep. He came all this way. If you return one herd of sheep, you're going to have to do everybody's. They won't know. They will. When the king speaks, your grace. Or this is who you have on the throne? Oh my god. Good luck. If we could but have the crown's coin before we started work, it would bring great relief. Right? Not just to me, but to all the smiths serving your cause. Show that you got some money in your bank. Oh, wait. You shall be paid, and paid well. Out of what? Grace, it filled my heart to see you on the Iron Throne. I was only a boy when Jehari's last grace Can you just you literally Spartan him. kick him over this balcony? I wonder, do you have a moment for quiet word? Mm-hmm. This man is weaving himself so into this family, and I love it because down with green. I would think, as we find ourselves standing within a hair's breadth of war, that you would wish to be viewed differently. Equally pliable. Otto Hightower was your father's and your grace. You could pick your own, like me. And how would you define victory? Please explain it to when us. When you're bending the knee and Egon sitting the Iron Throne in peace, hmm. as Viserys wished. <laughs> These critical days since Viserys is passing I haven't gone to plan. That's not my fault. Isn't it? Isn't it the fact that you have terrible children? The hand to three kings. Hmm, no, Eamon Eggon doesn't is like ever anyone. eager to prove himself, and Eamon is crazy. Rhaenyra's son took his eye and was never punished for it. What he did, however vicious. The caprice of youth. Mm hmm, just make excuses for your little sociopath. But he is fiercely loyal. He wishes to please mm, himself. But if you undermine my voice, both those boys will grow deaf to it. He doesn't care. He never cared about your voice, sweetie. That's why he sold you into marriage. But you must accept that the path to victory now is one of violence. Thanks to your son, the crazy one. She is definitely her father's daughter. Can't believe I felt empathy for her in season one. Dissipating by the second. Actually, it was kind of over by the end of season one. I'm gonna be very, I'm gonna be completely real. Simply spent the business along. Business that ended with the theft of the queen's throne and the murder of her son. You only blame me because your true enemies are out of reach. I mean, that's the way it works, but you did help. Have her moved to the cells. She is to be treated as a traitor to the crown. That's why I abandoned the King's Guard and my brother and came here. I don't care. Egon was in your grasp. You should have killed him yourself. I mean... I can I have a name to the King's Guard. I just right? Like, that's his whole life. You can't break that honor code. To defend the whole of the royal family. So what were we to do when they turn against one another? Yeah. Think of where they were, bro. And I don't think he would have respected him if he had taken him out, truly. You know that if they swear an oath, they mean it. She's home. Go delicately, Damon. Did you find what you needed? As much as she's probably ever going to. Your council stands at the ready, your grace. <gasps> the babies! They're grown up now, but they're still the babies. I, I want Eamon Targaryen. That's where her mind is right now. Battle strategy, blah, blah. I want that little in the ground. She's still in the grieving process, guys. It's been days. Just, just keep going. Your knowledge in exchange for your freedom. The other option is to stay in that cell. It don't look too clean or smelly. You, Grace? I think this might be a mother moment. And Lord Craken Stark. Hmm. I promise. Just give him a this. hug, Jesus. <laughs> Not y'all getting me to tear up. Come on now, I'm a thug. It sucks that all they have left to to mourn him with is just his clothes or his cloak. His cloak, I think it was. little humanity left in there. Good to hear. Damn, we just crossed the River Styx? What's going on? Oh my god, going incognito. You know, never, I just, 
always baffles me that none of the Targaryens are smart enough to just think that maybe they could just do a little something with their hair, make them a little less conspicuous. I'm told you'd bear a mislike for the High Towers. Fuck the High Towers. Amen. You must be busy. That castle positively crawls with me. <laughs> Figuratively and literally. Crab of rat's nest it is. I know them better than the shape of my own cock. Not exactly the comparison I needed. You're to find and slay the Prince Aemon Targaryen. He has silver hair and one eye. It should be easy enough to find. Uh, I don't think you should be sending a layman in to do that. I understand he's quite good in a fight. You want to take caution? Yeah, you, what? This is no, not going to work. All right. Do you trust a man who deals with rats for a living? That's not going to go well. I don't like this one-eyed loser, but he can fight. What if there's to upset the order of things? And Alicent is simply... Alicent? Angry. She blames me for starting this. As thing. you did! Her grace speaks with two tongues. I really hope he's the one to take her out, because that's what she deserves, honestly, for raising this monster. And Rhaenyra is a cunning spider. Shut up, you butthurt little baby. Intoxicated her. Oh, I think we're talking about ourselves now. You've a zeal to act, I understand. I was young once myself. I only wish to serve my king and my house. Exactly. Let me just re repeat exactly what you want to hear, Gramps. You and Vega are the greatest single power in the realm. And a single point of failure. Well, I promise you, Aemon, you will have all the vengeance that you seek, but you must keep a grip on your impulses. You might as well be making the Charlie Brown sound right now for all he cares. So this is why the rat catcher came back into play from the beginning of the episode. Interesting. This is not going to go the way it's supposed to at all. I'm trying to remember whether or not Damon saw how a how Aemon fights. I'm thinking that he, he thinks he's still like a little boy, which he is, but he's a little boy with a lot of anger, hate, product of centuries of incest. I mean, so is Damon, but anyway. I'm really surprised that Damon would be this sloppy though. Like the best way to get to someone like Eamon would be to poison him, honestly. Like something like a Joffrey style death. Who gives a shit what they say? My brother at least knows his place. He's as loyal as a hound. I can set him and his dragon on my foes at will. Not him getting drunk on the Iron Throne. Kill the dragon cock. Yes. <laughs> The He's literally a frat boy. You've got a frat boy on the throne. This is this is what you wanted over Rhaenyra. I wish it wasn't reflective of the way it goes in so many different countries with monarchies. I got you in the castle. I thought the rest was your bed. <laughs> don't fight. I just don't know my way around. <laughs> that is a strong man. Me. And now this man has no loyalty to you. <gasps> Okay, so you gotta die now. You didn't even hurt the dog. Oh, this no, is the room here. they were just here. <gasps> we need to keep looking. I told you, I'm not supposed to be on He's here. not. He should go. Truthfully, they probably don't even know which rat catchers belong where. But I don't trust that rat man. He's definitely gonna betray you. Or run for himself. One or the other. And I don't blame him. He really thought his job was just to get you in there. She gonna tattle. Sir, there are so many flammable things in that room, and there are babies on this floor. Who the fuck? No, leave her alone. Not the baby, no, please. No, 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 no. No, he did not say the baby. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Which one's your boy? Might be that one. But look for a cock. Don't you dare touch those children. I'm dead ass. Do anything but what I ask, and I'll bleed the whole lot of you. I'm afraid you all deserve to die at this point. Not her, though. This is so stupid. Which? You had one job. You were going to fail, but you had one job. It's of great value. I know you're not asking her to choose. That's no son. Really? You're going to take out a baby? He's the other one. She's not going to give up the king's hair that easy. You don't know her. She's telling true. Hold him down. I don't want to see this. This is so horrible. 
Do something, sweetie. Do something. Anything. I did not think they would let that happen. Oh my God. This just got way too... No. No. This is awful. The only person who deserved that blade was Amond. Wow. I thought it was going to happen again. They killed the boy. She said, let me protect my baby girl. Ooh, damn. I don't even know what to say about that. I don't even know what to say about that. Because that girl has always been a little off to the left. But you know what? Wow. Okay. Okay. Damn. The last... Five minutes of that episode got crazy, guys. That was, what? Listen, y'all know I was giving Team Green a hard time through this, okay? But like, it's all fun and games, okay? For the most part. The only person in there, truthfully, that deserves a gruesome death at this point, in my opinion, is Eamon, because that kid is crazy. Has been since he was a child. But I digress. That was wrong on so many levels. I don't know what that man who went in there, the big guy, I don't know what the high towers did to him to make him feel like he could go through it. Like, no, this was just so un unnecessary. This was so horribly unnecessary. And the repercussions of this, like right episode one, we're starting off with this. That little boy didn't do nothing but exist. But I mean, I know this is sadly what happens when you get into these old time political situations, like a royal family, if you were gonna usurp or take over, everybody was fair game. Like they did not care. Oh my gosh. Oh, little baby. He was just playing with little marbles in the, in the war room the other day and now he gone. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um. Yeah, I, I think this episode, as I said, for me, it really picked up in the last like 10 minutes or so. That's really when things kind of went up. The first half we dealt with, you know, obviously Rhaenyra's grief, her wanting to find confirmation that her son was in fact gone. Completely understandable, right? Of course, she doesn't want it to be true. I said it in the episode. I think she feels like there is a possibility that she could be responsible for this because she did send him on that mission. She was thinking maybe he was too young, but at the same time, she knew that if they were going to form up this new royal family and you know, set things up the way that needed to be done. She had to kind of push him into that role earlier than she probably would have liked. And yeah, this is just one of those crazy things you couldn't possibly anticipate, but she's obviously just devastated over it. I really like the way that, um, oh gosh, what is her name? All the names are gonna have to come back to me, guys. It's been a minute, but um, her aunt, the, um, Corliss's wife, when she basically explained to Damon like why Renera left, because he was sitting there like, oh, she should be here. She's, you know, all of her duties are, are being left behind while she grieves. And I mean, I think that it just shows that people deal with grief very differently, right? Damon had just lost his wife not that long ago. The way he kind of dealt with it is he kind of shut himself away for a bit and then he moved forward, right? But that's the way that he deals with it. But people deal with things differently. I do think that for Rhaenyra, you know, she's always loved her children. She's always loved her children. Every single one of them, they mean so much to her. Family means so much to her. And yeah, to lose your son like that, to lose your, you know, anyone in your family so suddenly is going to cause a lot. But that is literally her, that was her baby, right? That was one of her babies. So anyway, I'm glad that she at least got to the point where she's made peace with the fact that he is in fact gone. He is not coming back. And they at least got to, you know, give his, give him his funeral service and let everyone mourn that moment between her, between Jace, I think it is. And her was just so beautiful, like him just trying to be, you know, the man calling her, you know, your your majesty instead of mom. And yeah, I'm just glad that I'm like, just go give him a hug. Like you two are feeling this the most because, you know, obviously they were such a tight family unit, unit before all this. So yeah, that was a heartbreaking moment. And we see that unfortunately at the moment, Rainier is really just not in the, she's not in the warm mindset, right? She's, everyone's like, hey, we got some things, them, some strategies, we gotta make plans, we gotta move forward. You know, the whole council's ready. And she's like, yeah, no, I want my little, jerk of a brother right here right now so I can make him pay. That's what I need to do. That's what I missed. I don't care about none of this more, nothing. I want it. I want a son for a son right now. That's what I'm thinking. And this is completely in line with the stages of grief, right? She's gone through the, the disbelief, the shock. She's in the anger phase at this point and it's justified. It's real, but you know, Damon does make a valid point in that we don't really have time for all this. Like things are about to kick off. King's Landing is moving and making, you know, trying to make moves. 
And if they don't hurry up and catch up, it will be all for naught, all the things that they've done to get the, what little ground they have right now. So yeah, kind of sad on Rhaenyra's front, but I do think that, um, you know, she is going to snap back into it at some point when things get pushed. I don't think she's going to be happy about hearing what happened to this little boy, but I think she's also at a place right now where she may not necessarily have the emotional capacity to feel to feel too much about it, if that makes sense. I, I don't. I know she would never have wanted this, but... Yeah, as I said, right now, I think she's in a place where anything that happens over in that castle is the least of her concerns outside of Damon being punished for what he did. Speaking of going over there, we might as well go to Team Green for a minute. There wasn't a whole lot on Team Black this episode, really. Uh, actually, no, we'll finish up with Team Black because that was the shorter part of the episode. We see that Damon is on the warpath. You know, he wants to just get this revenge because he wants to get everything back on track with trying to get this, this war finished as, as easily and as quickly as possible. And... Things were not really going his way because he wants Rhaenyra to be on the same page as him and they're not on the same page right now. So we see that he, you know, he hears Rhaenyra say, I want Aemond. And like the dutiful husband that he is, he tries to do it. He uses the spy. I forgot about the spy from last season. I didn't recognize her. And she basically lets him know that there might be some people willing to help him inside the castle. But as I said in the episode, I felt like from the get go, this was a like a very half-assed plan, like to go against him or to try to go for him, for Amond. you know, I, I just feel like that was not, especially in a physical way, I guess that's my point. Yes, there was a tiny chance they might've been able to sneak up on him when he slept, but I feel like to get to someone like him who is clearly very agile, a good fighter, like no joke. And as I said, I'm not sure that Damon is aware of just how good Amond is, but anyway, I feel like you need to go with him sideways. Like I said, like something more subtle, poison was probably your best bet because I don't even think he takes bedfellows. You probably couldn't even get a, a girl in there to do some crazy stuff. Like it's probably gonna be a poison thing for him. That would be the best way to take someone like him out. Um, even a slow poisoning would work too. But anyway, yeah, uh, sending someone in, I think was a mistake. Clearly the dude that they found to do it, he was huge, like almost mountain big, but strength's not enough right? If you know what you're doing, you can definitely take down a big guy pretty easily, especially because he went into the castle with none of his, his normal gear to protect himself. So anyways, I knew it wasn't going to go according to plan. I'm like, either they're going to meet Damon and Damon's going to make quick because the rat catcher couldn't do shit. Let's be real. He couldn't do anything, but he's either going to take them both out or something else is going to happen. And we see that instead they weren't able to find Damon like they are Amond, although they just missed him. Literally, they went to the same room that they were in. Though if they had just busted into that room like that, they definitely would have failed again because what's his name? Sir, Sir Horalot would have been in there as well. But anyway, we see unfortunately that things went sideways and they saw the rat catcher found the queen instead. Rat catcher clearly crazy, but I guess he was also desperate for money. But yeah, let's just, yeah, they didn't need to do it. There was just no reason. He didn't need to go for the queen. I mean, I get that he probably caught her by surprise, but she's so out of it. She probably would have not said anything, honestly. But anyway, I'm just, I can't express enough that I'm not okay with what they did. That was not necessary. Like they literally butchered a child. They didn't need that. And like he even knew, even the big guy was like, this isn't Amond. And he was like, it's a son. And I'm like, no, that is not what Damon asked for. But that's what Damon gets, unfortunately, because this was a kind of a half-assed plan to begin with. Like, anyway, yeah, the ripple effect of this is going to be interesting, to say the least. Uh, it is now visceral. There's now been very deep cuts on both sides now. And both two, two parties that did not do anything to deserve. Two completely innocent parties now, which, you know, now it's going to make Team Black seem like they're just as bad as Team Green, which sucks. But yeah, this is where we are. This is what's going to have to happen. And they're going to have to deal with the repercussions of that. Um, that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, Corliss, uh, that scene with him at the beach, I'm sure that what's going on, what was the name? Alan, I think. It's going to come back in some way, shape or form. I don't think it was for nothing, but that's who saved his life. So thanks for that. But we'll have to see what happens um, with that. I feel like they, they showed him for a reason. So I'm wondering how he's going to intertwine with our plot this season. Um, going on to Team Green. Oh, team Green, what a mess. Yeah, Team Green is a whole mess. And that makes me very, very happy. We've got a king on the throne who, as I said in the episode, is no better than a frat boy. He's not taking any of this seriously. His mother described it. He's on a high of being the new king. He doesn't care about what's actually going on. He's taking the throne or the council sessions as a joke. He's got his son in there playing around. Like he's just not at all fit to be on the throne in any way, shape or form. But they already knew that. Like Alicent already knows her son is useless, but she raised him to be that way. So I have no empathy whatsoever in that regard. 
And then we see that, yeah, Alicent and her dad are still trying to plot, you know, their ideas that they're gonna both basically run the throne together through their son. They're like, you know, once our son, once um, once uh, the, the king becomes a Aegon, yeah, once he is, you know, over his little royal high, we're gonna take over and he's just gonna become a puppet. Don't worry about it. But I think they completely underestimate just how flippant that kid is and having his brother by his side. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely underestimating him. But anyways, they both feel like the real issue is Aemon, which they're right about. Like Aemon's the wild card. He's the one they can't really fully control. So basically Allison's like, I'll control Aegon because like he's, I can, I know what I'm doing. You dad, take care of Aemon, like try to rein him in so we can keep him under control till we get what we want done. But we see that in the conversation between um, Aemon and Sir Horlot, that, you know, he's very aware of the fact that his mom and, and dad, or mom and grandfather are trying to control his brother and him and that they're not really looking out for them or, or their personal interests, they're looking out for themselves. And he doesn't really wanna to listen to them, but he knows he kind of has to play the game for now. And obviously Sir Horlot is trying to like, act like he agrees with him, but you know, now that he's banging his mom, obviously he's not all for his, you know, all the back talk about his mother. So anyways, he's saying what he needs to say, but they're trying to make plans of what they can do potentially outside of what the council officially wants them to do. Because at this point in time, Eamon believes in him and Vagar enough to do everything. Like that's just enough. They're badass enough that one big dragon's enough to just get everybody back into line, which technically in a way I think is the case. I remember a lot of people mentioning last season that Vagar is a real badass of a dragon. Like he's no joke. But he is old. And, you know, again, uh, uh, Vagar versus a little baby dragon like what Luke was on. Yeah, easy. But how would he fare against multiple dragons, right? I don't think even he could take on multiple, and definitely not Aemon and, and multiple dragons. Somebody's going down. So he's a bit arrogant right now, but I like that because arrogant means mistakes and stupidity. And I, the more that kid can fumble, the better I'm, ha the more happy I am, the better for me. So anyway, there's going to be an inevitable face off though, because I do think that Damon is desperate to get to that kid. And, you know, a lot, it's a lot of hints that those two are going to face off at some point. If it's this season or not, we'll find out. But anyway, that's what's going on with them. And we see that his grandfather walks in on these plans and basically tries to make an appeal to Aemon saying like, yes, I know you want revenge, but just do as we say. Like, we know that you know that your brother, you know, he can't manage, like he needs you. Like basically trying to stroke his ego, but I don't think that Aemon's buying it. Like I said, he might as well be the, the Charlie Brown murmuring sound in his ear. I don't think he listens to his grandfather or his mom anymore because he knows that they're not in the same interest or they're not really going along the same path that he is. You know, Aemon thinks he's being loyal to the throne, but he just really wants to, he's just an angry kid. He's an angry middle kid that has been bullied since he was little. And as a result, he's just taking it out on everybody. That's all it is. Like, I don't care about this kid. I honestly would love it if he doesn't make it out of the season. Sorry to those who are fans, but I don't like that kid. The actor's doing a great job though, honestly. I just don't like the character at all. So anyway, there's that. As I mentioned with Sir Horlot, um, Alicent has made her her bedfellow. I'm not shocked. I saw that coming from last season. That man cannot resist Royal Poon. We've seen that. The man just, yeah, Sir Horlot needs to go as well. I really hope Rhaenyra gets to be the one to do it too. But yeah, they're they're doing whatever. And I'm like, girl, please stop with the whole, oh, this can't happen again. Eh, eh. Whatever. Like, I get it. You haven't had young, the, the first, the first, romantic, if you want to call it that. I'm being very, very nice with that. But the first adult experience you ever ex had with a man was of a guy old enough to be a grandpa and who was deteriorating, literally deteriorating. Like I can only imagine how horrific that is as your first adult experience. So I don't blame her for getting somebody who's actually more age appropriate and much better looking than what she had to deal with. So I, I get that, but yeah, I don't care about it at all. And uh, she's playing a real dangerous game here. Like, ma'am, you, you're still young enough to get pregnant. You make sure you don't get yourself knocked up here because you know what that's going to happen. Anyway, don't really care about that. Hoping that that, you know, I don't need to see it is my point. It's not, it's not moving me. Um, but speaking of Allison making poor decisions, I'm loving that that little creepy man with the cane, can't think of his name right now, he is going to absolutely pull the rug out from under her and I cannot wait. Like we saw it last season that she realized that she made a deal with the devil that she can't pull back. And he is just getting his claws deeper and deeper into Team Green's business and I, I live. I cannot wait for when that man starts to pull on those threads. And there, you know, Allison's realized it's not even Allison. It's like he's already looking to get her dad kicked out of the way. He's getting uh, Aegon under his thumb. He's got her by her short and curlies. I'm loving it. Like Team Green is going to be so 
effed by this man and I, I live. I cannot wait because it's what she deserves. I don't care. That's what happens. So yeah, I'm loving watching him weave his little web and I'm very curious to see how far it's going to go and how deep. He reminds me of like, you know, a predecessor to Littlefinger in the way that he's moving, you know? He's really doing a good job of kind of getting in there and making sure he's inextricably intertwined with this family in a way that they won't be able to realize until it's too late, like a bad infection, you know? So yeah, I'm liking it. Anything that's bringing Team Green down is great for me. The discord is going to be happening sooner than later. But I mean, I'm not gloating too much because Team Black is not exactly in agreement yet right now. They are somewhat on the same page, but there's still fractures in there right now, particularly between... Rhaenyra and a and Damon, you know, they're not 100% on the same team. And I think the more that Rhaenyra is kind of out of it, as far as this war effort goes, the, the more her council is going to lose faith in her. But hopefully she'll, you know, she's starting to make her way back slowly. And the last thing I want to touch on was the North. It was really cool to revisit the North and the Wall and see one of the elders in the Stark family. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be interested to see how much they're going to play a part in all of this. But yeah. The North is no one to be trifled with. There's a reason why the South did not mess with them. And I love hearing what he said about how the dragons don't dare cross the wall. I think the people in the North are going to play an instrumental part in this season. So I'm interested to see what that's going to be because I love me some Starks, man. I do. I do. They're my main family. They're the ones I need to stay untouched. I don't care what happens to any of the Targaryens, to be perfectly honest, but I am team Black. I just need the Black Targaryens to stay okay. All right. I want to see my girls on dragons. I want to see my Black girls on dragons and my Black boys on dragons. I said what I said, but just because you know, you just don't see enough Black people in fantasy. I wish we had more, but it's not something that's common. So yeah, anytime we get an opportunity to see it, I am down. Down, so I can't wait for that to happen. I'm just praying that they make it out of it. At least one of the girls. I don't know. I, I don't foresee that we're going to have everyone walk away from Team Black alive, but I'm hoping we don't have too many losses because I like most of the characters on that side. So yeah, I'd say strong start to this uh, season. Mainly that last five minutes, it, the repercussions, the ripple effects, as I said, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how it's going to affect things. And we're both in it now. Both sides have now done something that is irreparably wrong. So we're going to have to see how we're going to work it out or if it can be worked out at all. So yeah, good episode, guys. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.